Hi guys, my name is Kai Beattie. This is the second part in a two-part tutorial teaching you how to analyze your pictures of E. coli colonies and lambda minor fronds using the software ImageJ. And in this video, we'll be focusing on how to use ImageJ to calculate the area of live and dead fronds in your lambda minor culture image. And the first thing we're going to do, although I, I covered this in my last video, is to download ImageJ from this site. It's imagej.nih.gov slash ij slash download. You could just type that in um, to your search bar. And then depending on what kind of operating system you're going to be working with, um, you're either going to download the Mac OS X file here or the Windows file here. And I've already downloaded it, but depending on where um, you specify it to save to, it'll either save to your downloads folder or your desktop. Um, mine is on my desktop, I'm just going to show you really quickly. A folder like this is going to appear, you're going to click into it, and the ImageJ file itself is this um, .exe file. But before we open ImageJ, there's one plugin that we have to download um, in order to do this sort of analysis, and that is the color segmentation plugin. So to find this, you can either type in this URL or just search ImageJ color segmentation plugin. You're going to select this. Hit save. Since I'm on Firefox, it's going to show up here. And basically, you're going to open the folder. Just minimize this for a second. Open your ImageJ folder. Go in here. Go to plugins. And you're just going to drag and drop that file color segmentation right into there. So now that your plugin is in your plugins folder, you can go ahead and open ImageJ just like you would normally. And once ImageJ opens, it's just going to look like a taskbar in your top right corner. And before you actually open your image to analyze it, um, it makes sense just to go in your plugins folder and make sure that um, the color segmentation plugin was downloaded correctly. So you can see it right there that it was. So after you've done that, um, you can go ahead and actually open your Lambda Minor Culture image. And mine is already on my desktop here. So using the file open command, let me go here, browse through this tab, Lemna, and you're going to open it just like that. And like our last video, um, we're going to use the oval tool first just to um, clear everything outside our region of interest, which in this scenario happens to be um, the water containing our lambda minor fronds. So just drag and drop, and then using these white boxes, you're going to adjust your circle to fit it where the lambda is. Then you're going to get an edit clear outside, and that's going to make everything outside of your selected region black. So now we're going to zoom in and actually use the freeform tool, this one, um, to get rid of our Carolina label right here, just because that's going to mess us up in the um, threshold step, which comes later. So again, you're just going to drag using your left mouse click and highlight or should I say surround um, the Carolina label with your marker. Now we're going to go to edit, hit cut. That's going to make everything in your selected region black. So once we've done that, we're going to make a duplicate of this image, and I'll explain why we have to do that later. Um, but if you were to do duplicate at this step, when you, when you still have your freeform tool here, um, if you right click and duplicate, and do this, it's actually going to mess up your image. We want one that has the same exact dimensions. So we're just going to use our line tool so that we deselect that portion. Go back to our hand, right click, duplicate, and the one. So now we have two identical images, and although they're on different zoom scales, you can tell that they're the same size, um, judging by the 3024 by 4032 pixels in the top left of each of these. So we're actually going to leave this, um, this right image out for now. We don't really care about it yet. And we're just going to select this one using our, using our hand tool, make sure we're on this one. And we're going to go to image type 16-bit. That's going to convert it to grayscale, which will allow us to threshold it. 
using our image adjust threshold command. So in our last video, um, we actually thresholded um, the bacterial colonies themselves. But in this instance, um, threshold works a little easier if we um, select just the water and actually exclude um, the lemna minor fronds. So using this pop-up menu, you're going to adjust and you're going to try to make all of the water red and um, try to leave out the lemna minor fronds themselves. So use these two cursors. This should be good. I'm going to hit apply. That's going to make everything black and white. So now what we're going to do, now that we have our black and white image, is go to image, look up tables, invert LUT. And that's basically just going to invert your image. Everything that was white is now black. Everything that was now black is now white. And we do this because now that we want to um, apply our mask image um, to our regular RGB image, um, we could do that by going to, I believe it's process, yes, image calculator. It's going to open this tab. You're going to have um, your mask image actually be the second one. So you're going to have um, lemna here and lemna one, which is this image on the right, um, and the top one. And your operation is going to be and. And you want create new window to be selected. So we're going to hit OK. And now we can get rid of these two images. This will produce um, a new image that everything is black except for the lemna minor fronds, um, which retain their color from the original image. What I'm do now is I'm going to go into the plugins drop down menu. We're going to go back to our sub. Wow. We're going to go back to our color segmentation tool that we downloaded earlier, color segmentation, and it's going to open up this window. What this plugin will allow us to do is select which colors represent live and dead fronds. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit using my magnifying glass tool. <coughs> and since I have my first channel selected, this bullet point um, allows you to switch between the different channels. Um, I'm going to hit on my multi-point multi -point tool um, while this is still selected and select um, dark live fronds. And the reason why I select um, dark live fronds and light live fronds in two different channels is because sometimes um, when you're using the color segmentation tool, and you're selecting brown fronds, um, it might pick up this dark color as dead. So if you make a different channel um, for both of them, then it's a little more accurate. And I'll explain later how to do the analysis and how to make sure that um, those are still counted equally. So again, multi-point tool. This one, we're going to select dark live fronts. So this is the kind of color that I'm talking about. So um, at this point, you basically want to select as many as possible because doing that um, will ensure that your color segmentation is done as accurately as you want it to be. So now that I've selected a bunch of dark brown, I'm going to go into my B channel. I'm going to start selecting the light live fronds. Sorry about that. Okay, so and you can see um, the color that you're selecting will actually show up here, so it's really helpful um, when you're remembering which order you selected them in. So we're doing this. Nice. And your um, standard deviation of your RGB value is actually going to show up here um, if, if you want to be consistent in um, kind of the variation of your color in your analysis. Okay, that's enough here. I'm going to go into channel C, and this is the one where we're going to be selecting the dead color fronts. So all of this brown, we're going to have in um, a channel by itself. And you could skip around a little bit. If you want to go back to the magnifying glass, you can like go to different parts of your image, click back here, kind of get some other dark colors. And lastly, we're just going to have black. As another one. And you don't need to do a whole lot of that because that's all the same color, obviously. 
and once you've you think you've um, selected a sufficient amount of color you're going to hit run at the bottom of this and wait okay so this new window is exactly like the old one this image but instead um, it's all color segmentation and now this um, this pop-up window has the percent area of each of your colors and this is really helpful because during your analysis since you know um, the total number of pixels in your image you can find out by multiplying this percentage by the total number of pixels in your image um, what percent is um, dead what percent is alive and um, just a side note you're probably gonna have to subtract 95.83 percent of the pixels because that is your black value and you, you don't want to be counting that your fraction is going to be for live fronts it's 1.20 percent plus 1.65 percent over the summation of these three channels and actually just to show you how that works I'm gonna open up Excel wait for that to load here we go I'm going to start a blank workbook. Make it smaller. Alright. So in this first column, I'm going to label it blonde color. We're going to have dark live, light live. Um, dead and black. Okay, I'm just gonna shift that over, and this one is going to be the percent area. And I'm also gonna have another box down here that has um, let's use 3024 pixels by. Yep, 3024 by 4032. So that number is the total number of pixels in your image. So I'm actually going to move the percent area down here. It should be, should be there. Okay. Dark live percent area we know is 1.2. Light live we know is 1.65. Dead we know is 1.32. And black we know is 95.83. So what you can do here is um, start a new thing for live fronts, or you could say total live, total live percent. Oops. So what you can do now is hit equals here, open parenthesis, you're going to add together the live front percentages, divide it by the total area, Oops. Your privacy there, but um, we're going to exclude the black because that wasn't a part of our image. So this, if you multiply by hundred, should give you a percent um, of your live fronts, and obviously you can find the percent dead, total dead percent by either taking the dead percentage and dividing it by the total, or you could just do something like 100 minus this and um, to find the exact number of pixels um, of live and dead you just multiply this pixel live you can do equals select this multiply by that pixel dead this multiply by this enter and um, our quantitative analysis should basically match up with what you see qualitatively so again we have about 68% alive so if we zoom in here I think 68% is a good representation of this image so we can we can say that our analysis was done correctly 
Well, thank you for watching um, this part of the series. If you haven't watched the first video, um, please go and do that. It's also very helpful if you're going to be doing um, analysis with ImageShay. So, and um, thank you again. Goodbye.